Hey y'all, today we're going to be looking at 6.1b, simplifying trig trigonometric trigonometric ratios. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our theorems that we learned uh, yesterday, and we are going to apply them to simplify trig functions, okay? So we're going to take messy ones and make them simple by getting really messy first, all right? So what are some strategies to do this? How, how do we do this? It's a good question. A lot of times what you're going to do is rewrite uh, the reciprocal and quotient identities. A lot of times I change everything to sine and cosine, okay? That seem, is gonna seem silly, but once you see me do it, it's gonna make a little bit more sense. Um, if I have squares, I look for Pythagorean identities. If I see squares, I look at my sheet and I see what identities I know. And Look for common denominators with my fractions. Break fractions apart and factoring. Those are going to be my big tools. A lot of algebra here. Okay, pre-calc should be called algebra three. I mean, calc's actually algebra four. All right, so let's start with it. Number one. Let's use this first. Let's rewrite these all as quotients and products. Let's write them all as sines and cosines and see what happens. I don't see any squares, so I know it's not going to be Pythagorean. I look at my sheet, secant is 1 over cosine minus. I'm going to keep sine as sine because sine and cosine are kind of like the basic building blocks of all these. I'm going to change tangent into sine over cosine. Uh-oh, it's going to get wild. Okay, there should be a theta on all these. You don't need it until the end. All right, let's go. So I get 1 over cosine minus, what's sine times sine? If this was x, you do x times x is x squared. So for sine, I can do sine times sine is sine squared over cosine. <gasps> wow. I have a common denominator. So I can combine them. So I have 1 minus sine squared over cosine. Now if you look, I have a square. I have a sine squared. Whenever I have a square, I'm going to look at my Pythagorean identities. And one of them is sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Now, if sine, if a plus b equals 1, then 1 minus a equals b, right? So if sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, then 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. If you didn't see that, if you didn't see why I did that, because I could just go to the end right now and change this to cosine squared over cosine, which if you have x squared over x, that's just x. So if I have cosine squared over cosine, that's just cosine. Now I'm going to throw that theta in. So this messy start is actually just equal to cosine. Okay. If you didn't see how I did it that way, you could have also said, well, 1 equals cosine squared plus sine squared according to my original Pythagorean theorem. And then these cancel. Sine squared minus sine squared is zero. Either way, we get cosine as our answer. Isn't this fun? I can already see the magic in your eyes. Let's look at this beast. I already have a sine. I have a cosine. I'll actually write the a's in this time so you guys don't complain. I'm going to change tangent into cosines and sines. Well, when I look at my paper, uh, tangent is sine over cosine. Now, when I multiply these, what will happen to my cosines? They are going to cancel. You're trained just like variables. So I'm left with sine of a plus sine of a. 
All right, what's x plus x? 2x. So this is 2 sine of a. All right. This is going to take a lot of trial and error, you guys, and that's okay. That's why they put erasers on pencils. And I have to my math and pride. I'm just kidding, I don't. That'd be savage. All right, let's look at this beast. All right. I see squares here. Whenever I see squares, I'm going to check my Pythagorean identities first, okay? So let's check those Pythagorean And when I look at my Pythagorean identities, I see that cotan squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. So what I can do is I can take this cosecant squared and change it into cotangent squared plus 1. Let's do it. So I get cotan squared of u minus, in parentheses, cotan squared plus 1. All right, so far so good. Now I'm going to distribute that negative through to both. Minus cotan, minus 1. What happens to my cotangent squares? They cancel, and I get my answer is negative 1. Wild. Wild, wild, wild west. All right. Let's take a look at 4. There's a lot of ways to do 4. Um, which way should I show you? Um, I don't see any squares right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to convert everything to sine and cosine. It's going to get real messy. Just bear with me. So I have sine of x times sine over cosine. These are all of x. Oh, don't lag. Plus cotangent is cosine over sine. All over cosine. It's going to get real messy, guys. Just hold on to your hats. So now I'm going to take the sine and multiply it through. Okay? Sine times sine is sine squared over cosine. Plus, sine times cosine all over sine. This whole thing is over cosine. What happens to my signs here? Cancel. Okay? Y'all believe me? Good. You should. All right. All right. Oh, this is going to be so fun. Now, how do I get rid of this bottom? will multiply by my reciprocal, right? I multiply by the reciprocal to move that out in front. So I end up with, multiply this by both, sine squared over cosine squared plus cosine over cosine. This is just 1. Now what do I do? I'm real stuck. This is a dill of a pickle. What's sine squared over cosine squared? What's sine over cosine? Well, it's tan. So I can change that to tan squared plus 1. Oh, I know I've seen that before. I know I have. Look at this. Tan squared plus 1 is secant squared. There is a quicker way to do this one. Um, ask me maybe to show you in class. All right, let's take a look at number five. All right. There we go. Let's take a look at number five. So when I look at this, I could change all these to one over sines and cosines over sines. I don't know if that's the right choice on this one. 
Do you see how right now, when you look at it, they don't have a common denominator? So there's no way to really put them together. Because this one's over cosecant and this one's over one. A lot of times when you see a problem like this, your first goal, your first step will be to find a common denominator. So we'll multiply this by cosecant over cosecant. Because then they'll have the same denominator. You've been doing this with numbers for a long time. It's the same thing, just they're letters. Cosecant times cosecant is cosecant squared over cosecant minus cotan squared over cosecant. All right. Now they have the same denominator, so I can actually combine them. Now, now what? I quit. I don't like this. Why am I ever going to use this? My kids will say. Well, I'm going to look at my Pythagorean theorems because I have two squares in there. And according to my Pythagorean ones, I can change cosecant. Cosecant squared, if you look at your paper right here, I can change that into 1 plus cotangent squared, right? I have 1 plus cotangent minus cotangent. So what happens to my cotangents? They go the way of the dinosaurs. 1 over cosecant of theta. Now when I look at my paper, I can see 1 over cosecant of theta is sine. So all that was just to find sine of theta. What's the point? I can, I'm can. i just ready for it. I'm not ready. All right, let's do number six. Fun's easy. Yeah, let's do number six. All right, look at this beast. It's quite a beast indeed. All right, so we have cosecant my sine over cosecant. Awesome. So we already have a common denominator. This is a tough one to think about. Here's actually what I would do. And this isn't what they suggest, like what books would suggest. But I'm going to convert all these to sines and cosines. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Sine is just sine. And it's all over 1 over sine. Now, how do I get rid of... How do I get rid of that from the bottom? Well, I multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 over sine is sine over 1, right? So these go away. That's actually a theory behind it, but you don't need to know that. So I have 1 over sine times sine, which what's sine times 1 over sine? 1. My sine times sine is sine squared. I have a square. I have a 1. I'm going to start looking at my, I'm going to look at my stuff now. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So I'm going to change this 1 to sine squared plus cosine squared. What's sine squared minus sine squared? They cancel. So all that was just to find out that this is cosine squared. That was a lot of work. That's where I'm going to end it today, guys. I'm going to do two more in class, and then we'll do some on a worksheet. Uh, it's going to be confusing at first, but once we get a rhythm, it's not too bad. Trust me. Peace out, guys.